tough spot to be in. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, you can do a little bit better than that. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. God is a good God. Yes, he is. Amen. So we come to the seventh and final word that Jesus spoke from the cross. So far, Jesus has said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Jesus has said to the believing criminal crucified by his side, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. Compassionate till the end, Jesus has said to Mary and John, dear woman, here is your son, here is your mother. Suddenly the sun has disappeared and in midday darkness, Jesus cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Revealing his true humanity, Jesus gasps, I am thirsty. With a sense of triumph, he cries, it is finished. And now after six brutal hours of crucifixion agony, Jesus takes hold of the words of Psalm 31 and 5 and says, Father, into your hands I entrust, so I commit my spirit. From the very beginning, Christ had an understanding that his call was to do the will of the Father. When he was 12 and his parents found him at the temple teaching with the elders, he said to them, did you not know that I had to be about my father's business? Over and over, as he was teaching his disciples as well as the crowds, he would affirm that he was not teaching his thoughts, but that everything he said came from the Father. As he began the process of moving towards the cross, he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he said, please allow this cup to pass from me, yet not my will, but your will be done. And even as he hung on the cross, his utmost concern was to fulfill the will of the Father, his utmost concern was obedience to the will of the Father, even over his own comfort and his own safety. So first, what do these words show us? First, these words show us, one, the plain fact that Jesus laid down his life at the moment of his choice. Reading the different accounts, you get the impression that it was a conscious decision that now was the moment for him to go. Jesus may be nailed to a cross, but he is in total control right to the end. Remember what he said in John 10, 17 to 18? The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it for me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up. This command I received from my father. And so we are reminded that Jesus was no victim of circumstance. He was obediently working out the plan of God. Ha, hallelujah. Secondly, these words show us uh, the significance of the moment of Jesus' death. Notice what happened just before Jesus said these final words in 45. The curtain of the temple was torn in two. The curtain that separated the most holy place of the temple, the most holy place that only the high priest was allowed to enter, and even he could only enter it once a year. That curtain of separation was torn in two. As Jesus' sacrifice completed, the way into God's most holy presence was finally opened hallelujah <laughs> okay and then thirdly these words show us the trusting relationship Jesus has with his father notice that to the words of Psalm 31 and 5 into your hands I commit my spirit Jesus adds the word father right to the very end Jesus is still trusting his heavenly father right at the very end Jesus knows that if there's one place in this universe that his spirit is safe is safe in the hands of Father God. Amen? <laughs> ha. There is security in the hands of God. Jesus welcomed the security of those hands. Jesus welcomed the comfort found in those hands. Jesus found trust in the hands of the Father. Jesus welcomed the ability of those hands to do what no other hands could do, and that was to deliver him out of the hands of man. You see, when Jesus was in the hands of man for those last 18 hours, with their hands, they arrested him illegally. With their hands, they stripped him naked. With their hands, they whipped him until his flesh fell from his bones. With their hands, they beat him unmercifully all night long. With their hands, they jammed a crown of thorns down on his head until blood ran down like a river. With their hands, they placed a robe of mockery upon him. With their hands, they abused him for no reason at all. With their hands, they nailed him to the cross. You see, 
wicked hands did all they could do to defeat Jesus. But now, Jesus remembers whose hands he's actually in. He knows he is returning to the tender hands of his father. Hallelujah. <laughs> so here is the message we must never forget. It is impossible for us to fathom the depths of what Jesus endured and encountered at the cross. Yet from the cross, when Jesus said, Father, he was telling us that God is worthy of our trust, no matter how dark the situation appears to be. In what appeared to be the worst moment that could ever be, instead of blaming God, Jesus so trusted in what God the Father was doing that in faith and in trust, he said, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. That's the powerful and profound message that we must never lose sight of, that God is worthy of our trust. Jesus is saying here at this moment from the cross that no matter how fearful and dark it looks, God our Father is worthy of our trust and our faith to believe. Perhaps you have endured some very dark days. Jesus says God is worthy of your trust. Perhaps you face through, you're facing suffering and loneliness. Jesus says God is worthy of your trust. Regardless of what you face, Jesus says to you, God is worthy of your trust. Not just in the little things, but in everything that you face. You see, we live in a world filled with uncertainties that we cannot explain or understand. We live in a world filled with danger and death and sufferings. But Jesus says to us from the cross that above all, God is worthy of our trust. The cross of the Lord Jesus Christ is the foundation of our faith. Have you been to the cross? The cross meant death for Jesus, but praise God, it is the place where life is ministered to us through his death. Allow these wonderful words of Jesus from the cross to speak to you today. Feed on them in your hearts by faith. Father, forgive them. There's forgiveness for you at the cross. Today you will be with me. There's salvation for you at the cross. Woman, here's your son. There's love for you at the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? There's atonement for you at the cross. I thirst. Jesus suffered for you at the cross. It is finished. Jesus was the victor over sin for you at the cross. Father, into your hands I commit and I entrust my spirit. There's eternal security for you and for me at the cross. Yeah.